uh, and lovers of freedom. My name is uh, Clifford Chukwemeka Iranya, and I'm bringing you greetings from the great city of Houston. Today we're going to be talking about the Constitution, and the topic today is why we must bring down the Nigeria's 1999 Constitution. Why we must take that monster down. Let me even start by reading out uh, the from what I got on the internet the definition of constitution. It says a constitution is an aggregate of fundamental principles or established precedents that constitute the legal basis of a polity, organization, or other type of entity and commonly determine how the entity to be governed. In other words, it is something that is used to govern a country, an organization, or a place. We are talking about the constitution of Nigeria. Let me put it graphically so that we understand why the constitution is important. In every country, the constitution is the supreme law of the land. I am going to show this graph here. Please zoom it in. You can see policies, procedures, and other and then here you have the laws of the Federation, or what you call the Act of Parliament. And above that, you have the Constitution. In other words, policies, procedures, and others dovetail into the laws of the Federation or the Act of Parliament. And that, in turn, dovetails into the Constitution. In other words, the Constitution is the supreme. The Constitution is the highest law of the land. It is the constitution that establishes a country. It is the constitution that gives the country a sovereignty. It is the constitution that gives the power to people to govern or to lead a country. And that constitution must be made by the people. In fact, the constitution is the only document that is made by the people. Every other document is made by the representative of the people. But the constitution is made by the people. But the question is, was the Nigerian 99, 1999 constitution made by the people? Of course, the answer is big no. And that is why I am going to give seven points why we must take the constitution down. Seven points that we must take it down. In addition, before I even go to the seven points, I want us to if you, if you are a lawyer or you have a lawyer friend, I want you to ask your lawyer friend, your, your, your friend that is a lawyer, to go to section 6, subsection 6 of the Constitution. Section 6 has six subsections. Let the person go and interpret section 6, subsection 6D. Why am I saying this before I go into the seven point agenda? I read the other day that a group of people, organization led by a lawyer, uh, suing the federal government, trying to, you know, uh, bring uh, uh, Basanjo Gowon and Co. to book. My dear, that is a journey in futility because Section 6, Subsection 6D, gives everybody involved in the rulership of Nigeria from January 15, 1966 up to 29th of May 1999, a blanket immunity. In other words, you cannot try anybody in any court in Nigeria for any offense they committed or even for any law that is they made between January 15, 1966 and May 29, 1999. That is what Section 6, Subsection 6D said. That is very important. But let me go to the main issue of the day. Why the Nigerian 1999 Constitution must be taken down? Number one, the Constitution started with a false claim. A false claim is one of the reasons why that 1999 constitution must be taken down. What is the first claim? Look at the preamble. The preamble of the constitution, by the way, this is a copy of the constitution. The constitution of Nigeria has 320 sections and seven schedules. By the way, a constitution is made up of three parts. 
you have the preamble, you have the main section, and then you have the schedule. The schedule is the part that gives more details about the main section. The preamble of this constitution says that we, the people of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, having firmly and solemnly resolved to live in unity and harmony as one indivisible and indissoluble sovereign nation under God, dedicated to the promotion of inter-African solidarity, world peace, international cooperation and understanding, and to provide for a constitution for the purpose of promoting the good government and welfare of all persons in our country on the principles of freedom, equality and justice, and for the purpose of consolidating the unity of our people, do hereby make, enact, and give to ourselves the following constitution. When did we, the people, agree to all this? Where did we, the people of Nigeria, agree to all this? And when did we, and how, on what platform? That is a false claim. Number two, section two, subsection two of the constitution says that Nigeria is a federation. He said Nigeria shall be a federation con con consisting of state and federal capital territory. But that is a lie because a federation is a union of constitutions. That is the constitution with a plural with an S on it. A federation is a union of constitutions. That is why the Nigeria had a proper federation as of 1963 because there were five constitutions that were united. Remember that as of 1963, there were four regions the Northern region, the Midwestern region, the Southwest region, and the Eastern region. These four regions had their individual constitution and then they donated their power to form the fifth. Constitution. So there were five constitutions, and they can properly claim that it, it was a federation because a federation, I repeat, is a union of constitutions, and there were five constitutions. That is false claim number two. False claim number three there was no agreement among the people for the creation of 36 states, as stated in section three of the constitution. Now, somebody is calling me that I'm from Imo State. When did we agree to create that state or even give it that name? And that is why today you find communities split between states. There is a place called Ebema. Part of Ebema is in Imo State, another part is in River State. If you travel from Onicha to Asaba, immediately you cross the Niger Bridge. The first community you will see on your left, where they sell, you know, fish and yam and all that thing. I think there used to be a toll gate there. I don't know if it's still there, but that community is called Oko community. Oko is an is in Obaru clan, and you know Obaru is on the other side of the river Niger that they call Anambra State. But this Oko is now in Delta State by courtesy of this constitution that said there is a state called Delta State and carved Oko inside it. When Oko is from Aba Obaro clan, today my friend, my good friend Charles Oranyel and Mike Katisele, who are from Oko, are now going to be claiming they are South-South. Meanwhile, they are from Obaro clan in Anambra, or what they call Anambra State. So we never agreed to the creation of the state and the boundaries and the seven hundred and sixty eight local government areas. Those were never agreed upon. The other thing is is in section four of the constitution. Where did we agree to have House of Representatives and Senate? We never agreed to that. Now, if you go further in section forty eight and section forty nine of the constitution. Where did we agree to have three senators per state and the 360 House of Representatives? And in what formation did we agree that they will be distributed? So, false claim number one is one of the reasons why we are going to take down the constitution. The second one is that the constitution has already been breached 
Even the constitution is there, it has been breached. It's, it, has, it has been violated. Number one, there are 12 states in the contiguous north, 12 contiguous states in the north, who have declared Sharia law. They are governed by Sharia law. And this is in direct violation of section 10. For those who do not know, the shortest section in this constitution is section 10. And what did he say? He said there shall be no state religion, either at the federal level or at the state level. And now they have Sharia law. Sharia is based on Islam. That is a religion. So section 10 has been violated. As a matter of fact, those 12 states are not part of Nigeria. In fact, to be more direct, the current president, Muhammad Buhari, is no longer a Nigerian. Because if you read section 1, subsection 1 and 2 of this constitution, it says that this constitution is supreme and shall have binding force on the authorities and of person through and person throughout the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Section 2 says that nobody shall govern any part of this country, any part of Nigeria, except by this constitution. So now that they are governing outside of this constitution, violating the constitution, those 12 states are no longer part of Nigeria. Therefore, Buhari should resign so that a Nigerian will take over his place because Buhari is not a Nigerian. Despite the fact that he committed treason on December 31, 1983. Another thing that you can find out on the breaching of the constitution is in section 260 to section 264. There are five solid sections in, in this constitution. 260, 261, 262, 263, and 264. Exclusively dedicated to Sharia. And Sharia is based on Islam, again, in violation of Section 10 of the Constitution. That is one. Then the other one is that Section 217, subsection 2C and 2D have been violated by the President of Nigeria. That is a section, Section 217, uh, subsection 2, says that you cannot deploy the armed forces without approval from the National Assembly. And the president is using the armed forces for all kinds of nefarious, illegal, and criminal activities, killing people like Omaya and all over the place, thereby breaching the Constitution. Therefore, the Constitution has been breached and is therefore must go down. Number three reason, the Constitution is fully crafted. Why do I say so? The Constitution was written in order to give absolute power to the federal government and the president in particular. If you go to Schedule 7, if you read through Schedule 7, it's all about loyalty to the president, absolute power to the president. It's not supposed to be. The president is not supposed to have absolute power. There are powers that are supposed to belong to other parts of government and also other parts of of, of governance or structures of the country, like the judiciary and the Congress or National Assembly. That is one number one. Number two is that the Constitution was made such that it only makes room for people who are poorly educated to go into politics. In 21st century, remember this so-called criminal document constitution was crafted in 1999 just 20 years ago and they made the qualification for presidency of a country to be school certificate they were even very crafty they said school certificate they did not say whether it is secondary or if it is primary but that's not even the case the the situation now is that in section 318 Subsection 1 of the Constitution, they now further explain because in the first place they said school certificate or its equivalent. They now went to section 318, subsection 1 to explain what its equivalent means. My dear people, its equivalent here says that if you are able to read and write, 
First of all, you have to be a Nigerian citizen. Secondly, you have to be up to 40 years and above. He says that if you, when you certify these two and you are able to read and write, as determined by INEC, read and write, not by Ministry of Education, not by uh, any professor, but by INEC. INEC will determine if you are able to if you are able to read and write, then you qualify. That is not the good. That is mediocrity. Why? Because the framers, the people who wrote this, the caliphate, they don't go to school. They are not educated. And that is why you have people like Buhari right there. Because if they raise the bar to at least a bachelor's degree from a university, Buhari will never in any in his life smell that position. That is number three. Now, the number four is that this constitution, if it was properly made by the people, it will contain a clause that anybody who committed treason from from independence till the day it was made, that person should be banned for life. That is how it's supposed to be. Because you cannot truncate democracy and then you come back to contest. It's not proper. People like Buhari should be banned for life because Buhari committed treason on December 31, 1983. My name is Clifford D. Ryan, like I said. I live here in Houston. Buhari I want you or any of your aides to take me to court that I is that I'm, I was being libelous by saying that you committed treason. Let us go to court and find out what you did on that Saturday night or Saturday morning rather. On that Saturday morning of December 31, 1983. What is it called? Is it treason or is it not treason? Number four. It is this constitution, the only constitution I've ever seen in, a, in, in any part of the world, where it mandates one minister from each state, thereby giving a humongous ministerial position of 37 ministers. The constitution says that there shall be one minister for one state and one minister from federal capital territory, meaning 36 ministers plus one from federal capital territory, 37. My dear people of uh, 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 good people, do you know that the United States of America, with the economy, how big and everything it is, has only 14 ministers? 14. United States has 14. But by our by 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 this criminal document called a constitution, you must have, we must have a minimum of 37 ministers. That is senior minister, not to talk of minister of state and all that and all that. Do you know that Russia has 17 ministers? Do you know that China, as big as it is, China has 26 ministers? Do you know that Japan has 19? Do you know that even India, India has 24? These are big Nations, big population, big economy. And therefore, because of the poor crafting of this constitution, it must be taken down. Number five, number four, rather, the geopolitical nature of this constitution makes it candidate to be taken down. Geopolitically, this constitution is tilted in favor of the northern Nigeria. Why do I say so? If you start reading the constitution right from section 3, you will see where it listed 36 states. 19 of those states are in the north, 17 in the south. And then, if you go to section 9, which is the section that has to do with amendment of this constitution, you see where it says that for amendment to be done, it must meet up with this number of states in terms of House of Assembly and then the Senate and heart of rape. Section 48 and section 49 is the, are the two sections that listed the number of senates and the number of hearts of bread. Significantly and humongously tilted in favor of the northern part of Nigeria. And then section 134, subsection 2, 
which is the section that has to do with election of the president or how somebody can win the presidency. He says that for somebody to win a presidency, three conditions must be met. One, the person must have 25% uh, of the vote cast in 24 states. Meanwhile, the North have 19. The person must have overall highest vote cast. And thirdly, the person must have 25% of the vote cast in Abuja. So even if you take the other two out, the issue of two-third of the number of states, that is 24 states. So any northern that comes out, automatically we get 25% in the 19 states. All the person needs is just five states, and that will be it. So you can see that this constitution is geopolitically tilted in favor of the northern part of the country. Now, the other thing is the word count. If you look at the word count in this constitution, you find out that Sharia was mentioned 73 times. Let me repeat that. Sharia was mentioned 73 times in this constitution. Grand Kaji, which is a position in, 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 in Sharia, was mentioned 54 times. 5 for 54. Islam was mentioned 28 times. Islam, religion, Islam. Muslim, that is if you practice Islamic religion, then you are a Muslim. Muslim was mentioned 10 times. Let me repeat to it again. Sharia, 73 times. Grand Kadi, 54 times. Islam, 28 times. And Muslim, 10 times. There was no mention of Christianity, no mention of priest, no mention of pastor, no mention of evangelist, no mention of church, nothing. Everything is about Islam. And yet, section 10 is saying that there shall be no state religion. And even if, that means the word count is significantly tilted towards the northern region, which practices mainly uh, Islamic religion. To add to that, General Ibrahim Babangida donated $21 billion to OIC, Organization of Islamic Country, which they now try to twist it and call it Organization of Islamic Conference. It's not like Islamic Conference, it's Organization of Islamic Country. Babangida gave them $21 billion in 1989. This constitution must be taken down. Let me go to the uh, fifth uh, uh, reason why the constitution must be taken down. The constitution is the source of our underdevelopment and stunted growth. Let me repeat that. Number five, the constitution is a source of underdevelopment and, and stunted growth. Why do I say so? Section four. Subsection 2 talks about what is called exclusive list. And then he went to the schedule, schedule 2, part 1, to list 68 items that are exclusively under the control of the federal government. That is why all the critical infrastructures are listed in that 68 item. And that is why there is no development because the federal government decides when, where, and how they want to establish maintain this critical infrastructure there is no developing or no developed country in this world that you can mention that does not have 24 hours seven days a week power when you come to the united states power generation power transmission and power distribution is left in the hands of the private sector only thing government does is to regulate. So it's like the law regulating it. That is all. But in Nigeria, everything goes to the federal government. And so we are underdeveloped because without power, you cannot do anything. You are watching me now because you powered your internet device. Or you even have internet. And I guarantee you that if you are outside of Nigeria, your internet device or your, the source of your power is from the private sector. Now, the other thing is about security. I traveled to India in 2017 and I asked my dear brother, Christian Mosu, what kind of policing do you have in India? He said, the police, policing is state by state. And if you come to the United States, it's the same thing. 
In fact, we have the state police, we have the county police, and then we have the city police. In every other developed country, that is how it is. How can you bring somebody from Zungeru, somebody from, from, from Chibok, to come and become police commissioner? What does he in Imo State? What does he know? Look at the whole commissioners of police we have in the southeast. None of them is from the southeast. The SSS directors, they are all from outside of the southeast. Why? Because of Schedule 2, Part 1, which is exclusively 68 items. I don't even want to go into the area of ownership, operation, and maintenance of airports, seaports, railroads, and all that. They are all in the hands of the federal government. It's not supposed to be. They are all contained here. What about the issue of natural resources? The federal government confiscated the natural resources belonging to the owners, the communities, the individuals that own these natural resources and appropriated everything to themselves. First put takeover. Even something as mundane as registration of business names or company is done under federal government, under exclusive list. Therefore, based on section 4, subsection 2, and schedule 2, part 1, the constitution must be taken down. The sixth reason is the illegal and fundamental flawed amendment process. This constitution is the only constitution in the world where the amendment is done by ele elected official. Any other place in the whole world, the constitution is amended by the people, either through referendum or through voting. But in section 9 of this constitution, it's saying that you can only amend the constitution through the elected representatives. That is not the correct thing. Constitutions are amended by the people because the constitution is the only document, the only governance document that is written by the people and approved by the people. The laws of the federation are done by the elected representatives. Policies and procedures are done by, you know, technocrats and people within um, ministries and all that. But the constitution is done by the people. Therefore, if there is going to be any change in the constitution, that change must be done by the people and not through the elected representative. So, because of the fundamentally flawed amendment process, this constitution must go down. And secondly, talking about amendment, this, this constitution cannot be amended if it is goes against the political and economic interest of the northern part of the country. Because there are three conditions under which this constitution can be amended. Condition number one, the, amend the amendment that is being proposed must be approved by 24 states. The north have 19. So let's say you are bringing an amendment like restructuring or regional government, which you know will not favor them politically and economically. You have to get 24 uh, states' House of Assembly to approve it. And meanwhile, the whole South, they have 17. So where are you going to get seven states from the North to support you? That's condition number one. Condition number two, for any amendment to be approved, it must be voted in favor of by 240 House of Representatives. By the way, there are 191 members of House of Rep from the North and 169 in the South. So where are you going to get another, you know, uh, another 71 from the North to support you to vote in favor of something that will go against the economic and political interest? Condition number two. Now, condition number three. For any amendment or proposal to be approved, it must be supported by two-thirds or 72 members of the Senate. The entire South, they have 51 senators. The North plus Abuja, they have 58. That means the South needs 21 to support them. Where are you going to get 21 senators to vote against something that 
will affect the economic and political interest. Now, the section 9 says that these three things, these three conditions must be met. All inclusive. In other words, you can't meet only the Senate and you don't meet the House of Rep and uh, House of Assembly and the Department. No, those three conditions are inclusive. All inclusive. You must meet them. Therefore, being an illegally and fundamentally flawed amendment process, this constitution must go down. Now, the last part, which is the seventh part, which is even the most important. This constitution must go down because it is missing the most important part that is supposed to be in this constitution. And what is that part? The part, the most important part that is supposed to be in this constitution is Article 20. Article 20 of Cap A9, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria, 2004. You know the framers, they were very smart. They left that part in the laws of the federation. Like I said before, if you look, the law of the federation, the laws of the federation are lower than the constitution. The constitution is supreme. So what they did was to take that part after domesticating it. You know, the, it's part, the uh, Cap A9 or Article 20 is part of the African Charter of uh, uh, Human and People's Rights, which was which came into a, a, into force uh, in 1986. Five years after it was uh, uh, approved, what the federal government did, they domesticated that law, that people right, and made it as part of laws of the federation. Now, instead of migrating it from the laws of the federation into the constitution, they removed it. It is missing here. Any constitution that Nigeria will make that will that will that will not include Article Twenty of Cap A Nine, it is a challenge. For you watching me, please go and Google Article 20, Cap A9, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004. Any constitution they are making in Nigeria that does not include Article 20, Cap A9, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria, that constitution is null and void and is dead on arrival. So with this seven points, you can see that this constitution must be taken down. I know the question that is going through your mind is how? That will be the next video that I will make to show you how that constitution will be taken down. But I want to assure you this on closing, as I close. It doesn't matter the group you belong to, whether you are pursuing Biafra, whether you are pursuing Niger Delta, whether you are pursuing Oduduwa, whether you are going after Medobe, you are going nowhere as long as this document is still in force. It doesn't matter the group you are. As long as this constitution is in force.